Let's talk about uh, this divorced dad. So Yashar Ali uh, wrote on his Substack uh, with exclusive video footage from his own ring camera, which I suspect he got from a friend of the family or, uh, you know, the wife uh, herself. Steven Crowder was emotionally abusing his wife. And in a statement, Hillary Crowder's family says she hid his emotionally abusive behavior for years. To a surprise to pretty much no one. Uh, trigger warning. You know, you got some some domestic abuse here. Some emotional abuse here. Uh, here is the 3 minute and 27 second video from Steven Crowder's very own ring inside of his own house. Which, you know, I suspect you can only have access to if you are talking to someone uh, with knowledge, with personal knowledge over uh, the, the situation. Why is your boundary? I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did. You just did. I drew a boundary of abusive and cruel. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do wifely right things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I do have steaks. Wood pellets. My grill. I know it's an unreasonable request. But I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes. How do you man? I'm a man. This is fucking awful, but you know, the least surprising thing I've seen today. What is actually surprising is that Steven Crowder has one car only. What the fuck? bitch buy a second car. You have a wife who's pregnant. Why do you have control over the family car? All you're doing is smoking a f cigar in your backyard. That's so weird. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not about Steven. Give him an Uber. Okay, Steven, I can't. Do, feeling some constraints? Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. <laughs> I, I, Do you understand the difference between one life being set to the second and you going to be back when I'm back? The only way out of it is discipline or respect. What the only way out of it is when we're at an impact. We are at an impact. Good. Because you can't have any discipline or respect. Yeah. There you go. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you give up so easily. I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said, then we're at an impasse. Steven, no, we are at an impasse, okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, your abuse is sick. Your abuse watch it. is sick. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm going to let go. I'll get what you need me to get. And I, I need some space. We need to just talk and baby for a little bit, okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it, you go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Hillary, you're right, right in the past. Become someone that's you need. Day in and day out, worthy of a life worth. No, no. Dude, he's literally doing a change my mind on his fucking wife. Like, what the hell? On his literal barefoot and pregnant fucking wife. He has known for many, many years at this point. Like, he was abstinence only, according to him, until this marriage. And he's literally doing a change my mind on her. What the fuck? While smoking a cigar and wiggling his toes in his backyard. Out of the wife. I didn't say the wife. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get text me what you need. I'll get you what you need. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm not, I'm not committed to those things. Are you committed enough to do those things? things? You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you. I'm committed to that. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs? Don't you take that in. 
As the, as the Crowder's head inside, Stephen gets angrier and angrier, and by his own admission, screams, I will fuck you up, and his pregnant wife, Hillary, who then flees their home. We didn't see that part. I don't know why they just, like, put that in there, but not the, not the rest of it. Conservative media host and commentator Stephen Crowder can be seen on a ring camera video berating his wife, Hillary, who was at the time nearly eight months pregnant and demanding that she handle medicine for his dogs that she was concerned was toxic to pregnant women in the video. Oh my God. That's why she was saying, put on some gloves and get the medication for my dogs in the video. He snaps at her to put on her gloves to give his dogs medicine, walk the dogs and otherwise perform wifely duties as she is clearly emotionally distressed towards the end of the exchange. Hillary Crowder says to her husband, your abuse is sick. He snaps at her saying, watch it, watch it. Moments later off camera, Stephen, by his admission, would lose control and scream at his pregnant wife in a threatening tone. I will f*** you up, which led to his wife to flee their home. In a statement sent to me by Hillary Crowder's family, they say that she spent years hiding her husband's mental and emotional abuse from her family, that he lied about the circumstances around their divorce, and he wasn't present for the birth of their children. Documentary evidence I reviewed while reporting the story backs up their assertions. The statement in its entirety is printed later on in the story. The ring camera footage documenting the moments leading up to the moment when Steven said, I will f*** you up, something that was at the pinnacle of their aggressiveness in the marriage, but was also part of a pattern of emotional abuses posted full at the top of this post and detailed later on. No, he, he, we don't see that in the video. I don't know why he says that. The Crowders were married in 2012 after dating for two years and being engaged for less than a year. Hillary Crowder filed for divorce in December 2021 after she learned that her husband had hired a divorce attorney a month earlier. Hillary Crowder welcomed twins via a cesarean section, a C-section, in August 2021. Despite her best efforts, her husband was absent when the twins were born. Instead, he met their newborn twins later that day at the hospital. Oh, he confirmed through court documents that he admitted that he did this? Oh, yeah, Felix's take was pretty funny. Lol, Stephen Crowder got elective surgery to overshadow the birth of his twins because he couldn't stand them having the attention father of the century. Insisting that his wife take an Uber to get groceries because he might go to the gym was next level. How are you a suburban millionaire with one car and that can only work out at Planet Fitness? It blows my fucking mind. But it's also, honestly, I mean, dude, I get why these motherfuckers are constantly chirping about like traditional marriage shit. I get it. This makes so much fucking sense. People are saying one car is like a good way to... Uh, to control their partner that could possibly be a reason because like it is such a weird thing that a dude with like a 50 million dollar contract he, the dude that turned away 50 million dollars has enough money to buy two cars okay i'm sorry there is no planet in which a dude who turned down 50 million dollars cannot buy a second fucking car i think it's because he very clearly did not want her to to, to have any kind of autonomy independence whatsoever the night before she gave birth, Stephen and Hillary exchanged a series of text messages about separating. Oh, my God. Before she gave fucking birth, Hillary sent her husband one final text message. Stephen, I'm afraid of you and your rage. You are scary. You scare me. I want to heal things, but you have to take responsibility. Stop blaming others. Stop feeling pain and sadness only for yourself. In the past two weeks, rumors of their divorce, which uh, the press had not discovered for over a year, began to spread on Twitter. On Tuesday, Crowder spoke on it. He said... I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck. Does anyone have that video? Let's go back to the fucking uh, video and we'll we'll assess the Steven Crowder divorce video uh, one more time. This is the one. Uh, I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck I for be going on years now. Uh, since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Now, let me say on the outset, to be clear, there is no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. It's been the most heartbreaking experience of my life. What I consider to be my deepest personal failure. And just so you know, my opinions on parenting and families have not changed. Um, I've always believed that Children need a mom and a dad, that divorce is horrible. And I still believe that children need a mom and a dad and that divorce is horrible. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. So for well over a year, uh, well over a year, in the best interest, as well as physical safety of my children, we've decided to keep this issue private and to resolve it uh, privately with the appropriate attorneys 
what have you, legal jargon. And all this one thing I want to be really clear about is certain. True North here is that my children are blameless, completely without fault. And so we decided to resolve these issues privately as it's in their best interests, uh, both emotionally and physically, to do so. Now, the other issue is, and this is something that I've kept private for likely far too long, um, many other people knew about this behind the scenes. Some, not all, but some of them in positions of power, influence, leverage, knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like, first of all, the whole safety of the children thing is kind of weird to bring up. Like, I mean, uh, not safety, sorry. The children are blameless. Like, nobody thinks your children are at blame, dog. What the fuck? Far too long. Leverage knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly <laughs> veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. It seems interesting that he also left out the part that he was the one who originally wanted to get the fucking divorce, by the way. Steven has a lot going on, I guess is the best way to say it. He has a lot going on, and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their lives. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian. I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. You know, maybe if I feel in further defense, some things should be said, or maybe if I feel that the public has a right to understand certain circumstances. Well, my children have a right to privacy. Now, some other uh, issues have been, uh, or I should say, uh, inferences have been more pernicious behind the scenes with demands and threats to use this information that they believe would be uh, so publicly embarrassing to me and my wife at a difficult time that it could be used, knowingly putting my children in harm's way. So, to those self- It just doesn't seem like he gives a fuck about his kids, man. I, I feel like he's just using his kids as a simple means to, like, make himself come across more sympathetic. I think he's just a gigantic fucking narcissist. Here, I'll give it to you like this, okay? I have a fucking puppy, okay? And I wash my hands, like, eight fucking times after using minoxidil and have, have been considering just getting off of it for the duration while she's like a, a, a baby because I'm terrified that like I'm accidentally going to give her a treat while I have a little bit of that Rogaine in my hands when I put in my fucking hair because like that's the care and consideration that I have for a puppy, not my actual fucking child. The idea that you as a, uh, you know, soon to be father don't give a shit about your pregnant wife and you're like, yeah, use this medication that might be toxic to pregnant uh, women. Or uh, also put the gloves on and use it and put the gloves on and give it to the fucking dogs. Or the, the idea that you're like, you can't even drive her there. Or the idea that you can't even be there for the wedding. The idea, I mean, be there for the uh, pregnancy, sorry. Uh, the, the birth of your children. The idea that like you're smoking a fucking cigar even while talking to your pregnant wife, like, like those things are going to actually hurt your children. Getting a divorce is going to hurt your children too. So, you know, you could have maybe tried and, and, and worked it out. You were such a trad guy, you know, big trad guy. The discipline stuff was crazy. Styled Christians, conservatives, and allies, well, not in my book. Now, if you find yourself, I, I don't want to get into details, so this is going to likely be the only time I have to address this or want to address this. If you're asking yourself, hey, did X person or did Y person know? The answer is likely yes, which will be made alarmingly no! clear no! as this process of discovery continues. No! Uh, and it also, by the way, makes me that much more appreciative of Shit. those who did know about this and God in understanding it. the best interests of my family, my children, kept their word and used discretion. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Sincerely, I appreciate it. Won't forget it. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I 
loved a woman so much that I married her. A woman who, despite all of this, I still love as the mother of my children. And she wanted something else for her life. That's not my choice. She simply wanted out, and the law says that that's how it works. Now, of course, look, I get it. There are multiple sides to every story, but one thing that is undeniable uh, in this case is that it's no one's fault but my own in that I picked wrong, and that's certainly not the fault of my children. Okay. So that's where we're at with Steven Crowder's situation. Uh, Crowder bemoaned Texas' no-fault divorce law several times in his statement. No-fault divorce law allows either party in a marriage to get divorced without requiring a cause like abuse or infidelity, which is, of course, an insane thing to f***ing get upset about. Like, why the f*** couldn't you get a divorce with no fault? Like, what do you mean? But Crowder didn't mention that, what is, that in his very private wife, who hardly appears at public events and is rarely photographed, had made a request via her attorneys that her husband not discuss their divorce at all. Stephen Crowder dismissed that request and spoke about the divorce and their marriage for about five minutes in a clip that went, went viral. In a statement sent to me via email, Hillary Crowder's family said, Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas, apart from her family and support system in Michigan, and is focused on taking care of her young children. She's not prepared at this time to speak about her divorce, becoming public, or the misleading statements made by Stephen about their relationship. The truth is that Hillary spent years hiding Stephen's mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from her friends and family while she attempted to save their marriage. She was the one who was asking to work on their relationship to keep the marriage intact. For their unborn children. In June 2021, Stephen left their home to pursue elective surgery. Hillary urged him to get the help he needed to address his abuse with the hope that their marriage could be saved and they could peacefully live together as a family. Instead, Stephen refused to do so and chose not to be with his wife during their birth of their twin children. After the birth, Stephen... Uh-oh. Is she going to poop? No. Stephen bought a townhouse after their... Oh, my God. What the f***? Uh, instead, Stephen refused to do so and chose not to be with his wife during the birth of their twin children. After the birth, Stephen bought a townhouse and left her home permanently. Hillary was unaware that Stephen had hired a divorce attorney and asked his assistant to cut Hillary off financially. There is significant documentation substantiating these facts. We hope that Stephen will cease speaking publicly about these matters in an untruthful manner. We also look forward to there being full transparency in the legal process so there is fairness and accountability for the actions that cause the divorce and to ensure the outcome is what uh, is in the best interest of the young children. And they just like leaked this one fucking ring camera video, which basically solidifies everything that they're saying here. And I think this is more of a threat. Like they basically leaked this to be like, listen, you're crazy if you think that you can get away with saying whatever the fuck you want about this divorce. It's in your best interest not to speak on this divorce any further because when you do speak out on this, like, we're going to come uh, quick with the facts. And when we do, they are certainly not going to be on your side, considering that Steven Crowder insisted Hillary not take the one car to run errands as it would keep him housebound and that she, at nearly eight months pregnant, should take an Uber. His response in that situation should be, oh, I, I will go get it. You know what I mean? My love, I will go get the uh, groceries. You're fucking eight months pregnant. Or if you want some space, like I'll give you some space and I'll go get the groceries. Or of course, take the car and get all the space you need if you would like some, uh, you know, some breathing time. Holy shit. That is what you are supposed to do if you're a fucking man, okay? If you're the, the man of the household. What kind of fucking dumb shit is this? Insane to me. He also berates her for not doing her wifely duties like grocery shopping in a way that pleases him. Tensions rise. Stephen Crowder gets more agitated. Feeling some constraint, Crowder says to his wife. Crowder gets irritated and says that if Hillary, his very pregnant wife, takes the car, he can't go to the gym, see his parents, or see his friends. Incredible. What a fucking man baby, dude. That's what these conservative uh, motherfuckers want. They want to be like, they want to be man babies. They want to be baby. That's why they're like constantly promoting this trad cath lifestyle where it's like, come on, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. Come on, take care of me. Take care of me. Do your wifely fucking duties. So in that way, he is genuine with his commentary. I just didn't really realize that like that behavior could translate to someone who you're so closely associated with. You know what I mean? Who you at a certain point you know, claimed you loved. Hillary Crowder, in an attempt to leave, tells her husband that she loves him and that she's committed to the marriage. Stephen Crowder gets angry and suggests that if she's committed to their marriage, she should put on the glove to give his dogs the medicine that his wife was concerned was toxic for pregnant women and walk their dogs. As they headed inside, Crowder got angrier and angrier and was, by his admission via audio I reviewed, yelling angrily, saying, I will fuck you up. According to both Crowders and Stephen Im Crowders, Stephen immediately pulled back and realized what she said, what he said. But by that point, Hillary was frightened and left the house. In the review of the audio, video, and text messages, Stephen Crowder repeatedly admits that he, was a he has a volcanic temper and has been working through therapy to control it. However, at one point, 
in one of the audio files I reviewed, Steven Crowder gets upset because he's frustrated that he's not getting enough credit for not having lost his temper for months, but as that he can't promise he won't lose it again in the future. Two people who worked for Steven in the past say that he has created a cult-like atmosphere in the workplace and is intolerant of dissent. You're either fully for him or you're his enemy, one former employee told me in a conversation on Wednesday. In an interview on Michael Malice's podcast, Dave Lando, who used to be a co-host on Louder with Crowder, said that Crowder had surrounded himself with yes-men. Landau added about Crowder, he's become the bully and he doesn't realize it. Crowder's career in mainstream conservative media started in uh, Fox News in 2009, where he a appeared as a guest on programs and wrote for Fox News' website until he was let go from the network in October 2013. The show Louder with Crowder aired on CRTV and later The Blaze from 2017 through the end of his contract in 2022. Crowder's media footprint is substantial. On YouTube, his two channels have 7 million subscribers and have garnered 2.2 billion views. In addition, he has millions of followers across Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah, a lot of that stuff doesn't mean anything. On March 2023, Rumble announced that at least 58,000 people had subscribed to Crowder's channel, paying $89 a year each. That would mean over $5.1 million for his particular revenue stream. And the numbers that Rumble shared were in the pre-launch phase. The numbers have likely grown since. Damn, Crowder's a f***ing 89K subscription, Andy. I'm out here only f***ing scrounging at like barely 66K. Oh, no, never mind. He has 58,000 subscribers. Never mind. I have more subscribers than he does. Broke boy. It's this success in an ideological alliance that led the Daily Wire, the conservative media company co-founded by Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring, to make an offer to Crowder in October 2022 to bring his show to their company. I think Crowder probably didn't want the 50 mil because he knew it was like, you know, going to get taken from him in the divorce, <laughs> potentially. Daily Wire responded they couldn't be expected to compensate him at the initial contract rate if they were losing revenue streams. We know all that stuff. In reviewing documentary evidence related to their marriage, Stephen Crowder appears obsessed with the idea that his wife is only interested in him for money. Hillary Crowder started dating him. Well before he became famous and wealthy, he was making less than 100 k a year when they got married. In April 22nd, 2022, Crowder was talking on a show about his distaste for no-fault divorce. He said, if you're a woman that comes from meager means and you want to get wealthy, you've never worked, you didn't get a degree, you have no skill set, but you're good looking, your best path to victory is simply to marry a man, leave him, and take half. Wonderful stuff from Steven Crowder talking about the mother of his children. By the time Crowder said this, it had been five months since he retained divorce attorney, but his audience was unaware of this move. Six months later, he would walk away from a $50 million opening offer from the Daily Wire. Four months after the news of the Daily Wire offer became public in January 2023, his public comments about the proposal led to the destruction of his relationship with Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring. The public would learn that a dispute with the Daily Wire was the least of Stephen Crowder's problems. Sick man, dude. My wife is currently eight months pregnant. Talking to her like this at any point, but especially when she's pregnant, makes me so fucking angry. Yeah.